Hello, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about the Tarangalila Symphony by Messiaen. I'd like to go through this mighty work exploring the structures of each of the ten movements and also how the movements interrelate with each other. Because if you're anything like me, I love listening to classical music closely, and uh, if that's your kind of thing, hopefully this video will be a help to you. Now Messiaen wrote this symphony uh, between 1946 and 1948. It was a commission by Serge Kusevitsky and it was premiered by uh, no less a figure than the young Leonard Bernstein in Boston on the 2nd of December 1949. And uh, since then this work has just been recognised as just an absolute 20th century masterwork. It's a real one-off. I mean, a huge symphony in 10 movements. But Messiaen being such a singular genius, it's got the bird song in it. It's got the kind of titanic forces of the cosmos in it, particularly the force of love, both in the sexual sense in the sensual sense, but also in a kind of religious ecstatic sense as well, which imbues so much of Messiaen's work. There's his interesting use of harmony, often based on his own modes, the modes of limited transposition. And, and apparently while he was writing this work, he was greatly influenced by the Tristan and Isolde legend. There's even echoes of Wagner's opera, I think, in this work as well. So... It's kind of the love, the union, the sexual union between a man and a woman projected on a vast universal scale, but also imbued, I think, with a religious ecstasy. A union, not only physical, but spiritual. And this is perhaps um, reflected in the title, Tarangalila. I believe Messiaen took two Sanskrit words, Taranga and Leela, and stuck them together. Um, to get his point across. He wrote this about the work. Leela literally means play, but play in the sense of the divine action in the cosmos. The play of creation, of destruction, of reconstruction. The play of life and death. Leela is also love. Taranga, this is the time that runs like a galloping horse. This is the time that flows like sand in an hourglass. Taranga is movement and rhythm. Taranga Leela, therefore, means all at once, love song, hymn to joy, time, movement, rhythm, life and death. It seems Messiaen was really encapsulating the universe itself in this work. And of course he had the profundity of expression to do that as well. As, as the faith to do that, the religious faith to do that. Now, of course, one of the most notable aspects of this work is the use of the Ond Martino, um, that fabulous instrument which um, looks a bit like a keyboard or a kind of a synth, um, but with like a wire attached to it and you can kind of glide a ring across it, which makes that kind of ghostly wailing sound um, a little bit like a theremin, but um, with a bit more control. And there's different speakers you can attach to it. And um, Messiaen loved this instrument. And uh, I believe it's getting a bit of a, a resurgence these days. I, I think um, Johnny Greenwood out of Radiohead, for instance, is a, is, a, is a proponent of this instrument. But it's certainly an unforgettable timbre in this, in this, uh, this kaleidoscope of um, orchestral sonority. Now the Tarangalila Symphony is also given unity across these 10 movements in this sprawling symphony by these recurrent themes, which we'll come across and I'll um, play in due course. In fact, there's at least 30 themes uh, which uh, recur throughout this work, but there's probably four or five really important main ones that keep coming back. And uh, many of the themes, particularly the themes associated with love, are actual offspring from a much longer melody we hear in a slow movement, Jardin du Sommeil d'Amour. And 
in this symphony, you know, you can see a skeleton in there of a a standard symphony, if you like. Four movements. There's like a, a muscular first movement, a scherzo kind of movement, uh, a slow movement and um, a rousing finale. But fleshed out around this skeleton, we have uh, three movements which um, Messe described as talas, um, coming from the, the Indian classical uh, term for rhythm. The, the, the three taranga leelas, as they're called in the score. But there's also these three movements which seem to draw their thematic material from the, the long, the Garden of Love Sleep movement, which um, kind of break down that incredibly long theme into smaller sections and almost variations on it. So the first movement, the introduction, outlines a couple of the absolute key themes uh, in this symphony. Like many of the movements, it's in multiple sections. Very few of the movements are in standard schemas. Um, maybe three or four are, but most of them are rather episodic in nature. But there are these recurrent um, cyclical themes that keep coming back. And this movement begins with this kind of motor semi-quaver rhythm, which is such a characteristic uh, aspect of this symphony. We hear this in the violins, right at the very beginning. That kind of thing. That chugging, da 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 It's all over the place in this uh, symphony, particularly in the more developmental sections. Um, before we know it though, we're introduced to perhaps one of the two most important themes in the whole work, which Messiaen referred to as the statue theme. Um, it's a rather austere, ominous theme, which we hear usually on the trombones and the tuba. It goes like this. pops up all throughout the symphony and in its rather unyielding sinister nature it's, it acts as a counterweight um, to the love theme which we um, come to a bit later in the work. Um, so listen out for this, it's really distinctive. We're also introduced to the solo piano in this uh, movement which, like the Yonder Martino, is such a distinctive uh, element of this work. There's these uh, florid cadenzas uh, throughout the work, um, which pick up on some of the themes we hear and elaborate upon them in, um, you know, Messiaen's exquisite use of modes, including oct octatonic scales. And the piano is also the primary vehicle uh, to hear um, birdsong in this work, because like most of Messiaen's work, birdsong is an integral part. So the piano, uh, you often hear the piano chirruping away here and there. We also hear in this introduction uh, the flower theme, which is more of a motif than a theme. Uh, it's played on the clarinets, and it goes like this. We then have this wonderful moment in this um, this movement, which I call section F, um, where we have that motor rhythm, and you can kind of hear the metallic clank of the on Martino. It has like this metallic speaker here in this part of the score, as well as this syncopated, long-limbed uh, melody in the violin. So have a listen. It's a thrilling mix, isn't it? If you hear the wood blocks as well, the wood block is such an integral part of this symphony. So the, this opening movement really is a, a combination of those, those ideas 
uh, brought together and rounded off with this this swoop on the Ond Martino. Have a listen to this. The second movement, uh, Chant d'Amour un, number one, is a um, is a delightfully joyful uh, piece of music, and the first of the kind of meditations on the mystery of love, which is, I suppose, fully revealed in the sixth movement. This is one of those movements which has its own kind of love theme derived from this much longer theme in the sixth movement, the slow movement. It has a very austere opening, this movement, perhaps more akin to the statue theme than, than love, but um, it soon switches to this joyful dance which prefigures the, the song of the blood of the stars which comes later. It goes like this. After that, after that exuberant theme, we come to this uh, languid melody where time seems to stop still, um, a foretaste of the garden of love. And um, that goes like this. Back into those two ideas, which are called B and C in this movement, uh, really are the main uh, melodies. It's kind of almost like a rondo in a way. They just keep coming back time and time again. There are episodes though in between. Um, at rehearsal mark nine, we have um, what I call D which is where we really get to hear these marvellous Missandei on the on the Martino. Uh, I just love this moment in the symphony. And this is where on the Ond Martino the, the soloist has that ring and slides it up and down that wire to create that swooping wailing effect. Uh, such, such, such a distinctive hallmark of this symphony. There's another episode as well which I call E where we hear this uh, melody and uh, coming really into Stravinsky sacra-like territory here in this, this part of the movement. Um, we hear that on the oboes and on the violas, and we hear this um, <coughs> this quicker idea as well, tre vif. Really exciting stuff, and we have more of this kind of motor rhythm going on as well. Um, da -da 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 Have a listen to this really exciting passage. We have a return to the main dance-like idea and that uh, foretaste of the main love theme uh, before we have this exciting coda to round off Chant d'Amour, love song number one. We then come to the first of the Tarangalila movements, uh, Tarangalila number one, and these movements are rather darker in tone. Uh, more sinister, um, certainly more than the, the love songs. They're perhaps more meditations, if not directly thematically, but s spiritually with the statue theme, which we heard right at the beginning of the work. Tarangalila 1 is actually a theme and variations. And um, there are several motifs which are developed 
uh, throughout the course of this movement. Uh, the first one is this uh, rather mournful melody heard on the, the clarinet. It goes like this. There's this ghostly echo in this music. The clarinet plays it, the Ond Martino repeats it, almost as if it's somewhere in the distance. There's also a parallel between this melody, I think, and the opening of the Rite of Spring. If you think of that, it's quite similar, isn't it? Um, it's certainly in rhythm and in contour. Another element um, in this uh, opening of this, uh, this movement is this descending bass line, which we hear in the, in the solo double bass. Almost jazzy, or bluesy, actually. so forth. Those elements just keep coming back. Um, I think it's four or five times. Again, f um, look at the description below for the exact form with bar numbers. Now at rehearsal mark two, the tempo shifts and we, we go into quaver equals 100 beats per minute. And we have more of that kind of motor rhythm we've heard so much in this symphony already. Um, have a listen to this. Now, initially you think, well, this is a complete break from what we've just heard at the beginning of the movement. And in a sense it is. But what you realise as the movement progresses is that Messian saves some of the material for future variations. So as the, the, the movement progresses, um, we hear uh, new ideas come in and eventually they're all mixed up. The movement ends as it began in a very quiet, ghostly way. Until all we're left with is that jazzy sounding descending bass line. Chantamour de is again, like the first love song, a kind of foretaste of the, of the love garden, which we're gonna hear in um, movement six. And in structure, it's kind of rondo-like I suppose, we have these repeated ideas coming back. But it begins with this rather um, comical tune, I suppose, on the piccolo and bassoon. Etc. Also key in this movement is this uh, repeated rhythm heard on the woodblock, which goes like this. woodblock just kind of cuts through the texture throughout this uh, piece. The music then um, becomes more impassioned and we hear this tune, one of my favourite uh, melodies in this symphony. Let's hear it in context. That tritone. Da, 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 da. 
Um, remember that statue theme, which we heard at the beginning, is full of tritones. Reminds one of that. But then we come to the love theme uh, in this movement. This foretaste of uh, that extended melody we hear in the sixth movement. And always reminds me of the Firebird, Stravinsky's Firebird. It's like a, a dominant seventh chord, isn't it? This movement really is an alternation between this love theme and and the, the initial idea. Dum bum 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 bum. We do hear some intoxicating bird song as well in the piano. There's a great moment in here as well during one of the repeats of the A section where the statue theme comes through the texture in the brass. Uh, it's an absolutely brilliant moment in this work. Absolutely brilliant music and um, actually the motto theme returns, the, the statue theme returns at the end of this movement. It seems that the lovers um, are not quite free yet. Movement five, the joy of the blood of the stars is an, ex an exuberant dance on a cosmic scale. Apparently Messiaen here wanted the, the, the lovers to be kind of projected on to the, the night sky itself. Structurally it's very simple actually. We begin with this melody f uh, filled with rhythmic vitality. And this tune is just passed around the orchestra in this, uh, this kind of lover's chase, I suppose. And it keeps moving up the keys as well. Now there is a, a trio in the middle of this movement, if you could call it that. The, the, thematically, it's using still the that, da, 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 dum, da, da, dum, that melody, but it becomes more fractured and we're reminded of the statue theme. Before long we're back to the D flat major or there's always an added sixth with Messiaen um, of the scherzo. Right at the end of the movement there's another lyrical piano cadenza and we have this almighty heavenly sustained chord and we're reminded of the statue theme again. Movement six, Jardin du Semel de Mort, Garden of Love Sleep, is the, the languid heart of the symphony. We have um, this incredibly long love melody, which we've had hints of in pre prior movements, as, as, as I've been talking about. But here it is laid out bare, if you like. Um, and it's here, according to Messiaen, the two lovers are enclosed in love sleep. A landscape comes out of them. 
Um, and it's typical Messiaen with its added sixth chords and this kind of lush, almost uh, Hollywood sounding harmonies, if you know what I mean. With, you know, it's very romantic, a bit kind of kitsch in a way, you might say. But this melody is just so long limbed, it's ridiculous. The whole movement's about 18 or 19 minutes long, and you just hear this melody basically twice and then there's a coda uh, and it does have a hypnotic effect it doesn't feel when you listen to it the, the listener can get into a kind of trance themselves and it, it doesn't feel that long the movement even though you know it is long uh, it's probably a case of uh, the music taking us out uh, into some uh, quasi eternal dimension I don't know uh, that sounded ridiculous, but you, you kind of get the gist. So it's in F sharp major, um, which is where the symphony goes, actually. It's the trajectory of uh, this symphony. And um, the melody's like this. While that hypnotic theme is played, the lover's theme, the piano imitates birdsong over the top in this garden. That kind of thing. And um, this F sharp uh, melody, of course, will come back uh, to round the symphony off. But the seventh movement, Tarangalila 2, is a complete contrast to the uh, Garden of Love's Delight. We have um, angular, atonal, rather frightening music. It begins with a piano cadenza, um, and then we hear this, uh, this theme. Listen to that glacial phantom light descending on line. Then there's a contrasting section, which I call C, on pure vif. And this is pure percussion. This is cold in human music. We have a return to the cadenza-like uh, music at the beginning with added bird song. Um, and then really those ideas are repeated um, and varied. Um, there is a faster part in this movement as well, which I call D. Uh, near the end of the movement, the statue motto returns. The eighth movement, the development of love, is really, as the title suggests, the development of many of the themes we've heard already. The polar opposites of the statue theme and the love theme um, are both heavily represented. And when the love music does come in here, it's very much of a sexual nature. It's like um, a musical orgasm almost. And it's, 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 that, that release is like, um, it's very reminiscent, isn't it, of the, the Libertote uh, um, from Tristan and Tisolde. Um, right at the end of that opera, it's obviously a quote there.
they're very similar aren't they <laughs> so listen out for those those nods to um, Wagner's Tristan but of course remember the whole work is inspired uh, by the legend as well Uh, Movement 9, Tarangalila 3, is a series of theme and variations. And it begins with that theme, which I think is somewhat reminiscent of Stravinsky's Firebird. We've heard a version of that theme before, um, and with the, the, the bells, it's got this rather eerie, uncanny feel to it. With its focus on, on percussion as well, it's reminiscent of the second Tarangalila movement. The tenth and final movement is actually in sonata form, believe it or not. Um, as clear to follow as a movement by Haydn or Mozart, maybe. And the, f the first subject is very reminiscent of the dance of the blood of the stars, that, that movement, uh, I think movement five. With F sharp major, the, where we're heading in this piece, and it's got this real exuberance and energy and joy about this music. We have a transition based on that and then we come to the second subject which is an E flat major uh, from F sharp major to E flat major and uh, this is based on the first subject although you can hear that, that love theme in there as well. There's then a long and thrilling development um, where both first and second subjects are uh, expanded upon. It really is a thrilling um, movement, this one. We have the recapitulation, first, second subjects, and then right at the end, we've reached the goal. We have reached absolute uh, sexual fulfillment and perfect harmony in the cosmos, um, it seems. Uh, the love theme is uh, taking us to the next dimension. Uh, have a listen to how this work ends with that incredible love theme we heard in the garden fully a few movements ago. And that's the Tarangalila Symphony by Messian. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's been great fun to do this video. If this is your kind of thing, please click like and subscribe. Uh, consider donating as well if you wish. The PayPal is uh, down below. And um, if there's a piece you'd like me to look at in the future, uh, please put it in the comments below. All the best and take care. Bye-bye.